Good morning, everybody. What's happening? What's going on? Welcome to another review video. Today, I'm going to be giving you a quick rundown of the 2019 BMW X1 28i X-Drive. I believe this is the X-Drive. Um, I am in a 2019 X1 right now, and this is courtesy of BMW of Bridgeport in Connecticut. Um, I have my E39 in to get some Michelin tires put on and some new uh, refinished 17-inch wheels for the summer. And I dropped that car off and I was able to take this car out as a loaner, uh, free of charge, which is awesome. Um, and again, this is not a sponsored video in any way. Um, in fact, BMW Bridgeport doesn't even know that I'm making this video. But uh, when I have the opportunity to drive a brand new BMW, uh, that's like over $40,000. I figured why not make a quick review and uh, talk about what my thoughts are on the car. Now I also want to mention that this is the first brand new BMW that I've ever driven. So this take this review with a grain of salt. Uh, this is just my initial impressions of what a brand new 2019 BMW feels like. Um, it has 19, 1,900 miles on the odometer, so it's basically a brand new car. So the first thing I notice when getting into this car is that as soon as I, I climb in, you can feel instantly that the seats sort of grip you um, in a different way than leather does. Uh, as soon as I got in, I was, you know, questioning whether or not this was real leather. And to be honest, it's very hard to tell whether or not it is. Um, so I looked at the window sticker and this is optioned with, or it's not optioned with a leather, so the base option would be just the Sensatec uh, faux leather material. And it does have sort of a plasticky, rubbery sort of feel. It's soft, it's pretty supple and nice. I think most people would have a hard time distinguishing the difference between it. Um, but when you do get in the car and you sort of just slide your butt in on the seat, um, you can feel the, the material here gripping you. And I'm not sure how I feel about it. Um, it's sort of like uh, like a resistance to getting in and out of the car quickly and uh, I've only been driving this car for maybe an hour and you can sort of feel that every time you get in and out of the car it just like grips onto your jacket and grips onto your pants um, so I I'm not sure how I feel about the Sensatec material uh, I might go with the leather option if I were ordering a new BMW um, sort of a nitpicky uh, complaint but that's the first thing I noticed when I got in this car so this car has a push button start and stop and basically BMW put, started putting this into cars back in 2007 I believe um, in the E I think the E70 series X5 um, and whatever the X3 is of that generation is when those started to enter cars um, they even had them in like a Nissan my mother-in-law had a Nissan uh, Altima and I believe that had a push button start back in 2007 sort of when um, the keyless, like there's no actual key on this. That's sort of when this started to become popular. Now, speaking of the key, the key fob here is, is quite interesting. I know they went with this, uh, it's not really a trapezoid. I think a, a trapezoid sort of has equal, you know, two equal sides. Uh, this is more of like a rhombus or something, uh, but they went with this like asymmetric key, which is kind of cool because, um, I guess asymmetry is beautiful, right? Um, in some respects. But um, yeah, so basically all you need to do is have this uh, access key in your pocket, climb in the car, put your foot on the brake pedal and press the start button. Now the materials in here are not bad. Um, I'd say they're a little bit more premium than say, you know, my parents have a 2017 Super Forester and the materials are pretty nice. I'd say it's like on par with you know, some of the plastics in modern cars. Uh, the gauge cluster looks awesome. And in the center here we have a new um, infotainment system. And I believe for 2019 they finally switched over to a touchscreen. So let's check it out and see if it is. Ah, very nice. BMW, you have upped your game. I approve of this decision to go with the touchscreen. Now, prior to this, I believe the 2018, 2017, and 2016 models of the X1 um, did not have a touchscreen. All right, so I'll climb out of the car and sort of walk around and just show you guys what this looks like inside and out. Also, shout out BMW Bridgeport for the free water and snacks.
All right, let's take a look in the back seat area here. In terms of space, not that bad. Now I'm about five foot 11. And as you can see here, um, I have several inches between uh, my, my head, the top of my head and the, the, the roof line. Uh, and the seating is pretty low and comfortable. And yeah, it's, it's a lot better than I expected. Honestly, um, before I climbed back here, I thought that it might be a little bit tighter than it is, but for a compact SUV, I think um, there's quite a bit of room back here. Now, as for the cargo space in the back, I'd say you could probably fit a suitcase, a few suitcases side by side. Um, I've seen less space in compact SUVs. I had two boxes uh, of 17 inch wheels um, and actually I couldn't fit both of the wheels back here. I could only fit one of the 17 by eight wheels in its box. Um, the other one I had to put in the back seat when I was dropping off the wheels to the dealership. Now, what do we have back here? Looks like we have some sort of area we can plug in our phones, which is nice. Now, something else I wanted to note about this car, um, which I found was really interesting, is that if you can look up at the panoramic roof, which is enormous, it's like the standard pano roof that most X-Series have, uh, including my wife's 2005 uh, E53 X5. But one interesting difference is that this is like a thin piece of fabric that sort of just, it's almost like a sheet. Like the engineers in Germany were like, hey, let's save some weight and money. And instead of having like a nicely wrapped, uh, fully retractable, you know, piece of plastic that's upholstered, they just put this like flimsy little sheet up here. Um, kind of interesting. It feels a little cheap in the car, in my opinion, but um, I'm not sure what's in the X3 and the X5 models uh, at this point in 2019. Now again, uh, here I am in the back of the car and just wanted to give you guys a look at how spacious it is back here. Um, I'm really surprised at how much room there is. I think it's surprisingly, surprisingly spacious. Um, I had I figured that with a compact SUV like this, um, the space would be more compromised, but it isn't. Um, I'm five foot 11, roughly, and I have plenty of headroom. You know, my head is, I have like a good, probably a good five inches from the top of the roof line here. Um, everything feels very comfortable. I have nice, nice views from the window back here. Uh, the blind spot doesn't seem to be too difficult when you're driving. Um, even though it has uh, that C pillar back here that's sort of, you know, forever being encroached upon and, and raised up taller, uh, it really does seem like you have a lot of visibility for a subcompact or a compact SUV. We also have a cup holder in the center armrest back here, which is very nice. And this doesn't look like it has the ski pass. Um, there's a piece of fabric here stitched in um, behind the armrest, so it doesn't look like this has any um, of the more premium options. If you didn't know this, BMW X1s travel in packs. Another one just pulled in here. So I have to ask you, what do you think of your X1? I love it. Um, this is the first time I had an SUV, uh, but I always drove uh, the BMWs and I'm really enjoying it. Very good car. And this is a 2018 here? Yes. Wow, it looks great. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, I appreciate it. What's your name? Rich. Rich, I'm Sharon. Nice to meet you. One of the other cool features I love about this car that our E53 doesn't have is the ability to open the trunk here just with the key. And then you can close it just by hitting the button once. So arguably the most important thing is how does this car actually drive? Just how good is it? Um, well, let's go for a little drive and tell you guys what I think. Now, my initial impression of this car when I first got in was that it felt very, very fuel economy, fuel, fuel economic. It felt like it was sipping fuel uh, and like really barely doing anything. Um, 
It has an eight-speed transmission. It shifts really fast and efficiently between gears. And I think that this car really shows how efficient um, the newer cars have become because of all the strict regulations from the government and EPA and requirements for fuel economy and mileage. The one downside I noticed immediately was how sluggish it feels when it's in eco mode. And this car has like eco pro mode, similar to like the i3 um, and the electric cars. There's like an eco mode and then there's a sport mode. Now in eco mode, it's pretty conservative and it's really like, it really feels underpowered and it shifts very quickly between gears to make sure that you are sipping fuel um, and not being inefficient. And then with the touch of a button, you put it into sport mode and um, it immediately becomes more powerful. Um, you can feel the pickup a lot better. Um, you can't hear the turbos really, which is, which is nice, but you can hear some road noise. Um, one of the complaints I did read about this car um, before taking it out for a little review is that people are complaining that they hear the wind and the road noise um, a little bit more than say the more premium model like the X3 and the upmarket X5. And I think that, you know, it's hard for me to say because I haven't driven the latest models uh, to compare it to, but um, even at like a lower speed of 40 to 50 miles an hour, I can hear that, um, you know, that tire noise sort of transmitting through the cabin um, a little bit more than you would hope uh, on a premium, you know, upscale market vehicle like this. Yeah, so overall, I think this car drives pretty nicely for what it is. Um, you know, it's not as large of a cabin space as the X3 or the X5. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure if I were to buy or lease a car like this uh, for us, for our family, um, I'm not sure if I would want the X1 or if I would actually go for the X3, which has a bit more premium build. Uh, it's going to be a lot more expensive um, and it's going to have a little bit more room as well. Um, and I'm also undetermined or undecided whether or not I would order, you know, the six cylinder motor that's I think closer to 300 horsepower or if I would want the four cylinder turbo. Now the, the lease pricing on this car is pretty incredible. I have to say um, there's a sticker right here that says 339 a month and I think it's actually you can get it down to somewhere like 309 or 319 a month to lease this car. And a close friend of mine is leasing um, an Escape, like a, a brand new loaded with leather uh, Escape. And his payment is something like 390 or 392 a month. Um, and I think I'd much rather have the BMW. It has four year, um, four year 50,000 mile warranty, which is, and I think maintenance is included in that, which is pretty great. And um, yeah, I, I think, you know, going with the BMW for that kind of price is, is pretty reasonable um, for a monthly payment. Now, when you get up until like the X3 and the X5, the payments go into like the 449 a month up to 559 a month, and they keep climbing and escalating from there, depending on what options you want. Um, yeah, so overall, I'd say this car is quite nice. It's nicer than what I'm used to. My uh, old E39 from 2002 is now 17 years old, so I think a lot of you guys can relate. Um, you're following me because you may have seen some of my old DIY tutorials and repair videos on those models. And yeah, this is generally, um, yeah, it's a lot newer than anything that I've shown on this channel before. But hopefully, uh, you know, in the coming months, I'll be able to rent some more cars uh, and figure out a way to get newer models to review and drive and show on this channel. As always, uh, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, let me know what, you're, what you think in the comments below. Um, also, updates coming on the car detailing business. Uh, website is almost ready, and um, I'll be talking more about that in the near future.
This was the toll booth plaza from 1940 to 1988. And I'm at Booth Park here in the town I live in, in Stratford, Connecticut. And the people here at this park, I believe it was a pair of brothers, um, they took this old toll booth and sort of saved it from being demolished and planted it here on their property.